we got one more video for 11.7. Uh, we're going to look at some hyperboloids. So this is uh, the hyperboloid of one sheet. Remember, hyperbolas have similar equations to ellipses, except at least one of the terms is negative. Uh, so like x squared minus y squared makes a hyperboloid or hyperbola. Now we're in three dimensions. At least one of them has got to be negative. So I'm going to take a look at negative x squared plus 9y squared plus 9z squared equals 9. A common way we look at hyperbolas is when the right side equals 1. So if we divide that equation by 9, we get the equation on the right. Negative 1 over 9, or negative 1 ninth x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. Uh, one way of looking at this is look at what happens as each letter is a constant. So we'll do that here. If x is a constant, then I would move it over to the other side and I've got y squared plus z squared equals some value. y squared and z squared have the same coefficient, makes it a circle. Uh, with x being constant, this is in one of the yz planes. If y is a constant, I've got negative 1 ninth as my coefficient for x squared and positive 1 for z squared. This is going to be a hyperbola. And the same thing happens if we make z go to 0. If we set z equal to a constant, or if it's not 0, we've got to move to the other side. But if it's set z equal to 0, so z equals 0, we can see we have a hyperbola with x and y. So hyperbola, is, I can just imagine trying to do a hyperbola in three dimensions. It might be easier to draw the circle. So let's take a look at drawing the circles and, and extrapolate from there. And that's what I was writing right here. X equals C generates a different pattern uh, that's easier to graph. So let's work with that one. So let's look at different values of X. If x equals 0, we had y squared plus z squared equals 1. If x, that's a circle of radius 1. If x equals plus or minus 3, let's put that equation up here to look at it real quick. Plus or minus 3, when I square it, x squared becomes 9. 9 times negative 1 ninth is negative 1. And when I add negative 1 to the other side, it becomes positive 1. I get plus, positive 2 on the right side. y squared plus z squared equals 2. Uh, if you need to, write that out and take a look at it. But what we have is two circles with different radiuses. I've got the radius 1 here. And depending on whether x was positive 3 or negative 3, I had a circle with radius square root 2. So I did these here. So the way we shift this to a paraboloid or show the hyperbola part is we kind of like connect some points. So I can connect the tops of the circles. I can connect the bottoms of the circles. And that's kind of good. I don't know that I need much more than that. This is, a, imagine looking at a paper towel roll, but one that circle flares as it gets goes along the edge. So when we look at it, we've got hyperbola. No, no, remember, parabolas have like, they look like two parabolas facing away from each other with a gap between them. Uh, we see that right here. If I did, that was just doing the top and bottom. If I do the left and right, it's going to kind of clutter the picture some. but if I do the right, I'd have a parabola opening to the right. If 
I did the left, I'd have a parabola opening to the left. Those are hyperbolas also. Uh, but the surface is never broken up. It's all just one tube that flares as it gets further away from the origin. That's why this is called a hyperboloid of one sheet. Okay. Uh, let's look at our other scenario of a hyper hyperboloid. Uh, and we've got two negatives on this one. Uh, when we have one negative, we end up with a hyperboloid of one sheet. When we have two negatives, this is going to be a hyperboloid of two sheets, which is convenient. The number of negatives kind of gives it away. Uh, but I changed, made a different equation so we can look at that one. 4z squared minus 4x squared minus y squared equals 4. I rewrote this by dividing by 4. z squared minus x squared minus y squared over 4 equals 1. I very much could have put plus z squared at the end, but I'm a little bit neurotic where I like my first term to be positive if I can without making everything else look crazy. So if we check constants, set each variable to a constant, and remember, I'm going to use c equals 0 in my test cases. If x equals 0, I've got z squared minus y squared over 4 equals 1. That is a hyperbola. If I let y equal 0, z squared minus x squared equals 1. That's a hyperbola. And if I said z equal to 0, I got negative or a constant, I'm going to say. I got negative x squared minus y squared over 4 equals 1. Now, just looking at it right now, I can see x equals 0, y equals 0 creates a problem. So there is clearly something at the origin going on. Z equals zero, X equals zero, Y equals zero does not generate a point on my graph. Uh, so, but if Z is like, let's say it's 10. So I've got a hundred and I subtract a hundred over, I got negative 99 over here. And then I multiply three by negative one, I'd have X squared plus Y squared over four equals 99. Uh, Ellipses are, we're going to generate some ellipses because of this over four. So let's explore that some. So what I did is I moved the z squared, I, I multiplied through by negative one, and I moved the z squared over to the other side. Uh, if you need to, go ahead and work that out on paper to show that you get that. So if I want to have an ellipse, that right side's got to be greater than zero. If it equals zero, we just got a point, remember? So if the right side equals zero, we have like radius of zero, effectively. We have a point. So we want that to be greater than zero. If we solve for z squared minus one is greater than zero, we get the absolute value of z is greater than one which means we want z to be greater than one or z less than negative one. That's gonna generate two of them. If the absolute value of z is less than one, the right-hand side is positive, the left-hand side is, I've got a statement that says like, if z is negative one half, this statement says one half is greater than one. That generates a falsehood. So we have a gap between z equals one and z equals negative one. There's no graph. Uh, and we can see that if I just plug in z equals zero, there's a problem. So let's look at z equals one and z equals larger values. If I do z equals one, my equation right here becomes x squared plus y squared over four equals zero. And this applies to negative one also too, doesn't it? So if I solve this, the only way I'm gonna get something that works is if X and Y both equal zero. Uh, because I've got two positive things squared, adding them together makes the right or left-hand side positive unless it's zero. 
And the only one that way to make the left hand side zero is if both values are zero. So I would have zero, zero, one and zero, zero, negative one. Those are two points that are just singular points. Now we can't have values that are between zero and one or negative one and one. So uh, let's scale up our stuff. Let's go larger. Let's do plus or minus two. Oh. So if I do plus or minus two, z squared is now four, four minus one is three. So I get this x squared plus y squared over four equals three. And if I want to make it look like ellipses, I don't want that right side to be a three. I'm going to divide through by it. When I do that, I get x squared over three plus y squared over 12 equals one. This is an ellipse where the major axis is root 12 away from the center and the minor axis is root three away. Uh, these are approximate values. So I'm plotting that. This was my z equals one and negative one, these two values right here, just points. And when I did z equals two and negative two, I make these blue ellipses. This looks like a circular paraboloid if we only had half of it, right? It looks like a circular paraboloid, what we did in the last video. Now that we've got two, it, there's one opening up, one opening down. We do some connecting of the dots, uh, picking points on the ellipses and showing the, the parabolas the, uh, going around them like that. Since there are two surfaces, the surface up top, the surface up bottom, those are effectively sheets. This is called a hyperboloid of two sheets. If you'd like to see some other fun graphs, Go to page 732 in uh, Anton's book, uh, 11th edition. That's 11.7.2 uh, table. There should be a bunch of neat stuff to take a look at. And that'll wrap up 11.7. We'll see you for 11.8 shortly.